I've decided to make a series on Big Brain Co. examining each video individually and debunking them or at least commenting on them. And this is the first of those videos. I'm gonna be taking a look at their video on Shanti Devi's reincarnation. But before I get to it, I just wanna say something right at the start of this video. Something I should have said in my previous Big Brain Co. video. I'm not trying to pick fights with anyone. I don't want this internet beef. The reason I'm doing this is because pseudoscience is severely harming the country. As I've explained in multiple previous videos. And I think the work that this channel and multiple other channels do contributes to that. And the best way to fight misinformation is with good information. And that's all I'm trying to do. If what I'm saying here doesn't make sense, then feel free to respond appropriately in the comments. If anyone from Big Brain Co or their boss Ranveer Alhabadia is watching this, you guys are perfectly within your rights to peddle conspiracy theories. But please understand that I'm perfectly within my rights to call you out. If you're seeing me for the first time, hi, my name's Pranam. I've done a ton of such videos calling people out when they misrepresent science. There's an entire playlist on my channel. Without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> The video I'm gonna talk about is this one. I'll link it down below so you can watch it because I'm not gonna play it here. The video goes into the story of Shanti Devi, a girl that was born in Delhi in the 1920s. By the age of four, she began describing details of her past life in such vivid detail that her parents eventually decided to verify what she was saying. In her past life, she went by the name Lugdi Devi and lived in Madhura, 160 kilometers away. She even described her husband and son from her past life. And guess what? Turns out there was a man in Madhura that fit that exact description. And he had a wife that passed away after giving birth to her son. There are a lot more details in the story that the video describes. Eventually, she becomes really famous and gets covered in all sorts of media. And the news eventually reaches none other than Mahatma Gandhi. That's right the Mahatma Gandhi. Now he appoints a committee of 15 people who go with Shanti Devi to investigate her story. She amazes everyone by remembering the exact route to her house and remembering details like what door in the house leads where and where she hid money in the house and stuff. The investigation team then concludes that Shanti Devi is the actual reincarnated Lukdi Devi. There are more specific details in that video about all the vivid descriptions by the little girl and the events that occurred when the investigation team took her to Mathura. But all those details come from this article on this website that they've shown in the video. I thought they link it in the description, but no, they haven't. How convenient. But I found the website myself though, uh, and here it is. It's an article published by Dr. K. S. Rawat, who apparently has a doctorate in reincarnation. What kind of doctorate is that? I did watch a video of his on YouTube and he is clearly trying to establish that reincarnations are real. Punajan to this apne bhi bataya. Jan, Mithyu, Punajan. Apne apne is first ho gaya. Even this website is of a lady, Carol Bauman, who describes herself as a past life regression therapist. There are other people that feature in the story like Ian Stevenson who endorses the story of Shanti Devi and he is a past life researcher himself. And there is someone called Stur Lonestead in the story who is described as a critic turned believer who wrote a book saying that uh, Shanti Devi's reincarnation has to be true. I try to get more details about him, but his name only ever appears in the context of Shanti Devi. And this seems to be the only book written by him. So what do I think of all this? I'm sure there are many among you watching right now thinking, hey, he's a rationalist, of course he's gonna deny the story. This is what people often do. They put people in boxes and try to predict what they're gonna think, what conclusions they're gonna make. Instead of looking at their reasoning behind how they reach those conclusions. Because if there is something wrong with the conclusion they make, it's always because there is some flaw in their reasoning. 
Here's my reasoning. When I look at this story, I see all the details are from this article. From a person who seems to have spent his life trying to establish that reincarnations are real. The other people in the story also seem to have a stake in the reality of reincarnation. For instance, Carol Berman, whose website this article is from, is a past life regression therapist. That means she performs hypnosis on people and heals their trauma from their past lives, which means her profession depends depends upon people having past lives. Dr. K. S. Rawat and Ian Stevenson are also past life researchers themselves. So the source that they've used is definitely biased. Now, of course, bias doesn't mean it's strong, it could still be right. But there are some serious red flags in the story. The whole Mahatma Gandhi episode, I decided to look a little deeper into it. And I figured out why he was into this whole thing. This was 1936. India was fighting for independence at the time. There was also a conflict among Hindus and Muslims. Gandhi probably saw the Shantuk Devi story as a peaceful distraction from the political climate of the time. The people Gandhi appointed to the investigative committee were associated with the Arya Samaj, a religious Hindu sect, people who had religious beliefs around reincarnation. This is a huge red flag. The team investigating Shanti Devi's case was already heavily biased in favor of reincarnation. Here's a report of that investigation published by the International Aryan League. I'll link it down below. Now, none of this disproves reincarnation, it just makes it a lot less believable. But for me to believe it's right, I can't base it on such weak evidence. I'd much rather see neutral evidence from someone who doesn't have a stake in the conclusion of the story being one way or the other. That is what Carl Sagan meant when he said extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. People reincarnating after death is an extraordinary claim. I'd love for it to be true, but before I believe it's true, I want to make sure I have evidence from a credible source and not a biased article like this. I try to look for other sources that tell the story, but they all say the same things, almost as if they came from one central source. And the story appealing to the authority of Gandhi seems like a desperate attempt to gain some credibility. See, even Gandhi thought it was true. I may be exaggerating a little bit, but Gandhi's involvement shouldn't matter to the truth of the story. Now, have I proven that reincarnation is not real in this video? No, I cannot prove a negative, just like I can't prove that unicorns don't exist. But what I want you to understand is that Big Brain Co's video doesn't prove that reincarnation is real either. My point is that when you have something so incredible, so unbelievable, shouldn't we look at it with more scrutiny instead of jumping to the conclusion that it must be true? I'm not saying it's not true, it's definitely possible. But is possibility enough for you to believe such an incredible story? Like I always say, believing things on the basis of possibility shows wishful thinking. Believing things on the basis of evidence shows a rational mind. All the evidence we have are retellings of the story published in articles like these by people who want it to be true. I'm not saying that you can't make this video on unexplained mysteries, but the problem comes when you make it sound like facts without giving any proper disclaimer. I'm not gonna count the vague disclaimer they have at the beginning of the video. They have this disclaimer at the beginning of every single video and uh, it's so vague, it's like saying whatever I'm about to say may or may not be right. Like what? Here's how you should handle it. I saw this podcast that covers this exact same story. They were objective throughout citing sources and constantly talking about how there's no proper evidence for this for the events in the story, unlike Big Brain Co. This whole video is like arguing the earth is flat by citing flat earther websites and forums as a source. Wanting something to be true is different from it actually being true. Content like this is expensive for me to make. If you do like it, I'd appreciate if you support me on Patreon, buy me coffee, YouTube memberships or that thanks button. If you like this video, you might also like my previous video on Big Brain Code. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, remember, science is dope.